Okay, so we've set up our lens up at the top right, which is our sensor size. Now we need to figure out, because when we film stuff, it's going to have distortion from the lens. So you can solve it from here once you've done a full 3D track and got something working. The most common way is loading a lens grid and solve it from there. And this is something that we would shoot when we have with using the same lenses. So we get an accurate distortion sort of reference if you know it's hard to explain if you're not sure so we're just going to go through so i need to load in that data now so i need to go over to my cameras right click add new reference camera in the reference camera it's just going to reference the data we put on there so it's not going to be part of the solve it's just going to give us the data so we've got loaded in our default lens and you can see that it's ref free de default lens and we need to do the same thing. So we go to browse. And I'm going to go to my lens grid, which you can turn, it's all in the description. And you see, we've got this lens grid, this kind of madness checkerboard. And this is going to allow, once we've shot this, this allows us to find out what distortion is on the lens. And I mean, I can see straight, I don't mean, it's, I haven't shot it that straight, but we can see there's almost no distortion on there, but it's still very useful. Excuse me. So the way we need to do this, if we press F3, or we can still just go up to the top and choose distortion grid controls, you'll notice that you've got this thing in the middle pop up. And that's the distortion matrix. And which this basically, because we're using the lens grid, we can snap, we want to snap these points to that. And, you, and again, you see when you click and drag, so left click and drag, you can see that the zebra line pops up. If you let go, it will snap to it. And you can do this for the first four. You see it just snaps in, just click and drag. And you can do this for all of them manually. But at the bottom here, I don't know if you can see that. It's very difficult to see. There's a snap button right at the bottom of the screen in the middle. If you click on that, it will now magically snap all to the points. And this generally happens if you've got a really nice clear lens grid. And you're not always going to get a nice clear lens grid. You might not even have a lens grid if you're working on it, but they're super helpful. So now we need to fill out this lens grid. Simplest way to do that, I've zoomed out so you can see the, the keyboard controls. If you hold control and press up, you can see that now we're adding to the top part of the column. If you press control down, we are now adding to the bottom of it. And then guess what? Control left adds more to the left. And you never guess what? Control right adds more to the right. So we're just going to fill it all the way out. You don't need to go any further than that. You can. If you go and if you went outside, it just deactivates anything outside the play. You can delete that by pressing shift right. So if you've gone too far up, you can press shift up and it'll delete the ones from the top. So now once we've done that, all we need to do is go to calculate at the top, calculate distortion camera and geometry. And what you'll have, you'll have this come up. And you generally don't have to change much at all. Actually, you don't have to change anything. All you have to do is calculate those parameters. And it'll go through and it'll come up with all sorts of stuff. It's not really done very well. It's done something. But I imagine it's because it's not so strong. We can see some distortion in that. And you can change the model of what you solve distortion as. So as as normal, it comes in as 3D radial standard degree four, 3D radial standard degree four, and you can change these. Generally, you won't have to do much. You really have to change it. There's a lot more in here now since you've got a lot more anamorphic plates. You've got a classic 3D model, which I've actually used. I use that quite a lot. It's just a basic solver. Sometimes you get better results. Uh, just and you get once you open that, you can go to distortion and quartic, and it will give you a basic lens solve practically doing the same thing, but it's not done a huge amount. And then you've got this one, never used this one. I don't think that's going to make much of a difference for me, but I'm just trying it. And yeah, that's how we do the lens grid. So 
we don't need to do anything else in this. All we need to do now is go back to our, double click on our camera. And you can see that the distortion has transferred over because we're using the default lens here and the default lens is set on the reference camera. So we should now be ready to start tracking. So hopefully you've enjoyed that. I don't know how if it's been too long, but anyway, don't forget to like, don't forget to like and subscribe. I need to look at the camera.